Why enroll her neck grabbing her backpack when she was done with her part-time job? It was something she was doing without informing her parents. Not like they ever cared about her or her future. She turned 18 a month ago. The year she became an adult, but nothing grand was ever done. I know in Korea the adult age is 20, but let's go with the international one for now. She passed her time in college and working in a franchise, taking rounds of tables, serving customers, washing dishes and cleaning the area. She walked back home saving the money of the bus fare, her hands casually resting in the pockets of her hoodie which covered her head. I stuck to the ground, she grew up quicker than her age, born in a family where you are considered a curse for only being a burden on your parents. For going to school where you are thrown on a side, being an outcast, the only time someone remembers you is to give you pain and heartache. For having a crush on someone and getting humiliated by him on your prom in front of the whole building. It was a curse, going to school for getting bullied and returning home to be thrown under another depression. Nothing about her life was ever beautiful. She started a part-time job mainly to escape the hellhole which was her home and also able to collect money for her university which was starting in 4 months. It was 12.30 am out in the streets. There was no one. Yet, her casual slow steps reflected no fear of getting caught in any trouble and like always, she reached where she never wanted to be, her home. White typed in the password and stepped in as quietly as she could, not in the mood to face anyone. But of course, why would luck be on her side, ever? As she headed for the stairs, she stopped. Her parents sat there in lounge along with two people she had never seen before. A man nearly in his late fifties dressed in a three-piece suit, along with a lady who seemed like his wife also dressed in classic. Wine didn't belong to a middle-class family. Her parents were well settled. They owned their own business and cars, yet their daughter suffered under the stress of education and financial problems 18 hours a day. Her hood covered her eyes, head hanging low. She didn't raise her head, yet once moved her eyes up to take a good look of the guests. It was too late for them to be here, but not like she ever cared. She quietly, without once interrupting, got in her room, which was quite disrespectful for the elders, but worth was the use. She was going to get scolded even if she pulled up the sweetest smile in front of them. It was 1.30 am. She was almost asleep after the tiring day when the door to her room was pushed open. The lights were turned on and the intruders were already in. Nothing can be done. She sat up and looked at her parents who looked like they were going to throw another humiliation her way. We need to talk, her mother said. Whatever it was, they couldn't wait for the next day, right? Wine. If it is about earlier, I am sorry. I didn't mean to disturb anyone. It looks serious. If there was one thing she learned after all these years was don't argue. Just say sorry and move over it. It will save her from a hell lot of argument and drama and the time she could use for something else. She had a lot in her plate. Mother, you know the Jones Enterprise? Yes. Of course, they are over the world. Mother, the chairman is luckily your father's college friend. Your father managed to agree him to open up a branch with him here. The chairman is leaving for the States to settle there and he decided to let your father handle the business here. They are partners for long now. Wine was confused but however decided to nod along. Whatever it was and whatever the reason was she was suddenly told about this. This is what she understood. The chairman was leaving and was leaving his one out of the many branches here on her father's shoulder, which was, according to her, the shittiest decision from such a wise man. Mother, but he wants his only son to be married before he leaves, and his son is not ready to find a woman for himself just yet. 
So his parents are looking for one themselves, and so we offered you. Wine. Offered me? Am I a toy or something? Mother. They agreed if their son is alright with it. Wine. What about me? I'm someone's child too. That's another thing they never care about me. Like that one terrible son is cared by his parents. Father. Wine. That's not how you talk to your mother. Mother, you are marrying him, and that's the end of discussion. Wine grit her tea. She got off the bed, moved calm, but her insides turning into a mess. She wanted to throw out. If after all the shit she went through, this was her last ring. Getting thrown away just for their benefit is always. Wine, you know what? I'm done with both of you here. I'm an adult now, and I'm disowning both of you. I'm moving out. You're never going to see me again. Father, what the hell are you talking about? Wine, exactly what you heard. Her eyes reflected anger, but she was scared. She was too scared talking to her parents this way for the first time. She gathered her courage, but that doesn't mean she was suddenly all powerful. Wine, in fact, I will move out now, not like any of you ever care. And if you will try to stop me, I'm going to police. I had enough of you too. Her frantic heartbeat almost gave her a heart attack as she rushed to grab her school bag, leaving everything. A phone and a bag was everything she took. Her father suddenly grabbed her hair, pulling her back, and a slap landed across her cheek. Father, you're crossing your limits, Wyan. Who is teaching you all of this? Where do you stay the whole day? Enough of it. You're staying in the stem room till your head is back in its place. Wine struggled but it was of no use when her father threw her on the floor and stepped out locking the door from outside. She had no window in her room or any other escape. No friend who could help her. She was so lonely she didn't even know how to have a normal conversation with someone. She didn't cry. Tears gave up on her a long ago. She simply stared at the locked door with emotionless eyes. Just when she finally thought she was going to be free, she was simply getting thrown to another hell. Three days passed by. She stayed in the room, missed her college along with her job, informing them that she was sick. Her parents knew how to make someone do as they wished. She was set on a blind date with a man going by the name Chan Jung Kuk. He was currently 25 years old. She must be forced but she couldn't understand what was wrong with that man to agree to go on a date with an 18-year-old. Her parents warned her. They had guards keeping an eye on her. She didn't have her cell phone. She couldn't escape, couldn't make a call to police. Even if she could, her parents could easily buy the police. There was nothing she could do than to attend and hope that the child's son would step back from this himself. It was obvious he would write. No one ever liked her anyways. Once she stepped in a restaurant, it was as luxurious as it could go. It was empty, however lit up with lights as it would at the busiest hour. A table near the window was booked by a man sitting there in that huge place alone. A few guards standing in the far corners and she knew they belonged to him because the guards her father put for her were out of the sight. She was escorted in by a waitress. The sound of her heels echoed the huge empty place. She wore a red-colored dress that hugged her frail figure so well. Uncomfortable. She was not a fan of such dressing. She had rather like her cargo pants and an oversized hood covering her from head to toe. When she stopped in front of the table, she saw the man standing up from his seat. Wine, Mr. John? The man was dressed in a three-piece suit, which screamed luxury, a watch on his wrist that alone could buy a Mercedes. He was cladded in a brownie. She was interested in fashion designing, so she could tell by the first look. His hair pushed back, giving him a sterner look. He had sharp eyes and features. He overall looked calm. 
Yet one look at him and anyone could tell he was not someone you wanted to mess with. A handsome freak overall. Jungkook, it's a pleasure to have you, Miss Vine. Please take a seat. It was different, but what was she expecting anyways? He was a mature professional businessman and she was only 18 years old trying to survive. Once he gestured towards the seat opposite to him, a waiter rushed to their side, pushing back a chair for Wyan to sit. Wyan thanked him and took a seat and so he did. Jungkook, I know it's weekend and students would hate getting their favorite time of the week, getting spoiled this way. Wyan, I don't want to marry you. Wyan said bluntly, cutting his words. He stopped. Eyes on her, there was no change in his expressions. Jungkook, I am aware, but what if I say I am still going to marry you? To be continued.